far from home. John Baird is in Burma, where he met with the country's opposition leader, Aung San Suu Kyi. After years under house arrest, she's being allowed to run in elections next month. But she suggested to Baird not everything is as it seems. The Nationals' Adrian Arsenault reports tonight from Rangoon. Burma's success is now measured in little gestures carrying big meaning. Enthusiastic lineups for opposition party stickers. These are bold new expressions. And this, a kiosk in support of political prisoners. Months ago, this would have been prohibitively provocative. Organizer Mo Ong is careful with his enthusiasm. He told us he feels safer, but not completely safe. Hesitation isn't his alone. Aging change is what's behind the first ever visit of a Canadian foreign affairs minister to this country. John Baird arriving in the oversized capital, meeting men who talk now of reform in a regime with an ugly reputation for cruelty. They asked Canada for textbooks on democracy and an end to uniquely tough sanctions. They got the books, not the reprieve. Not yet. But they've come a long way. Uh, we want to acknowledge that. Uh, at the same time, we want to encourage them to, uh, to go farther. But the key element to this visit is a trip right here to the lake house of Aung San Suu Kyi. This is where she was held captive for the better part of the last 20 years, isolated from the rest of the world. But now it has become a place of political pilgrimage. She is free and she is running for office in a land on the edge of a new start. Real great privilege to meet you. Consider this. After a brief meeting, on behalf of my fellow Canadians, I'm very pleased to present this to you. A presentation of official Canadian citizenship. Aung San Suu Kyi is the only woman in the world bestowed this honor. The ceremony could not have happened months ago. And no one predicted she'd be allowed to run in April elections. Good, but not good enough. We have just discovered there are many, many irregularities on the voter lists. And we have uh, uh, applied to the Elections Commission to do something about this. So I would like you very uh, to watch very closely what's happening to make sure that the elections are free and fair before you decide what the next step should be with regard to sanctions. There remain limits on expression, assembly, there are still political prisoners, but some sense this too will change. And there's nothing more than I would like uh, than to put out a statement on April the 2nd congratulating them uh, for, such, uh, for such a clean, uh, transparent and fair not election. I'm not sure all the, all the results will be in by the 2nd of April. Okay, well, I'm not sure we work that quickly In here. Canada we get it done that night. Uh, well, we're not Canada. <laughs> not, but not Canada yet, nowhere near the Burma of Aung San Suu Kyi's dreams. What she knows better than most is reforms can be reversed and repressive regimes don't go without a fight. Adrian Arsenault, CBC News, Rangoon, Burma. Aung San Suu Kyi is one of just five people to receive honorary Canadian citizenship. Swedish diplomat Raoul Wallenberg was made a Canadian citizen in 1985, nearly 40 years after his death. Wallenberg helped save 100,000 Jews from the Nazis. Former South African President Nelson Mandela received the honor in 2001. He was followed by the Dalai Lama in 2006, and the Aga Khan became an honorary Canadian in 2009. He's the spiritual leader of 15 million Ismaili Muslims and is renowned for his humanitarian work. One more note from Ottawa, a new report prepared for the Prime Minister's office suggests